towards the small car park at the end of the B, whatever it is. I have to look it up. Found it all. When it gets this little bridge, it's that way to the pottery over the bridge, and it's that way to the hill. Got a tea room as well. <laughs> and then you get the first proper view of the Hill for Vaughan. I don't know why, but this path always seems really slippery for some reason. A special kind of mud. Then through another little gate onto a boardwalk. As you can see, it gets a bit boggy in places. But there's more bogginess to come. Oh, after following the slippery red path for about 0.4 of a mile. I don't know how many kilometres that is, I'll put it on after you come to these two gates. You're going through that one, the far one. Actually it's 250 metres. The clever sign there tells you. Well, that's not kilometres. <laughs> and while you're standing here at this red slippery track, there's an interesting tall Punch and Judy stand. Although why they want it out here, no idea. I think it's a Punch and Judy stand anyway. On the gate, the path continues through the, the woods. Yeah, it's a bit stony and slippery underfoot. And this part. Yeah, it's a nice little woodland. And then just over half a mile, the climb begins, going uphill. You have to watch out for these tree roots. When they get wet, they get really slippery. This is what you call a babbling brook. I can hear it babbling. Yeah, you call it a burn, actually, but a babbling burn. There's quite a few of these boardwalks, conveniently situated in bits where it's otherwise awkward to walk. More tree roots exposed. And another gate leading into more woods. There's a particularly muddy bit, but you can get around it by going over there. And it continues up through the woods there. You can see the non-muddy bit is still very muddy. Anyway, here it goes. Can you can hear the squelching. After about three quarters of a mile or so, the trees start to open out a bit. And just up there, you can just start to see the side of the hill. The open bit, anyway. Then a hundred yards or so further on, the trees disappear, more or less. A few little scrubby things. See the top over there, and then the path turns into this sort of stony, it's more of a riverbed than a path. But anyway, I'll show you what it looks like further up. A big mouldy mushroom, how can a mushroom grow mould? <laughs> anyway, I suspect the path looks like a riverbed because it is a riverbed when it rains. 
That's why you need boots. Break your ankle falling over on one of those things. And then, up to just under a mile, if you stop and look back, you start to get a view. Unless the mist comes in like it looks like it's going to. And there's the hill. Not in mist just now, which is a good sign. But you never know in Scotland, in the hills, it can change any time. Anyway, we'll see when we get there. First view of the loch. It's about a mile. And more lovely weather. Not. Should have a waterproof jacket for you. And a waterproof jacket for your phone. You never know when you might need that. Scotland, walking. After a while the path turns into this. So sort of mud. Muddy peat. <laughs> but I'm filming. The way we've come, not the way we're going, because it's raining and the rain will be in the lens and you won't be able to see anything for splodges. But you can see a bit more of the lock now behind us. Slippy slab. Just over a mile now and all the trees and shrubs have finished. So from there on it's all just exposed heather and grass and rocks I suppose all the way to the top so bear that in mind if it's a sunny day because there's no shade so bring a hat don't need it today mist coming in now walk so far has been to get to this ridge which is here now but then you have to climb over this it's a fairly high style um, just imagine it's not very easy for people with dogs especially big fat dogs or dogs that don't like heights or people that don't like heights like me anyway I'll see you on the other side As my colleague just pointed out, if you've got a wee dog, it'll fit through that hole under there. It might get its feet wet though. Even a big dog might fit through that. And then they'll run away on the other side, maybe. But anyway, you could probably get it through. Oh, this is how high it is. I'll stop Clark crying now. But my colleague here is demonstrating how easy it is when you're not a wuss. Took me 10 minutes to get over there, with all this shaky. <laughs> then there's a path that leads all the way along the top of the ridge, all the way to the top. There's a view of the top with the mist rolling in. Hopefully it'll have rolled out again by the time we get there. But the view's opening up a wee bit. More of the lock still. Other brave people climbing over the stile. Showing you how it's done. I think he was crying a bit at the top then. No, just me. Look at that, I'm all missing. <laughs> oh, yep. Yeah. A lot easier backwards. He's come back to help. She's doing fine. No. 
job done. Yeah, hold on. There's a nice little valley on the other side of the ridge, look. There's these rocky slabs on the path that are covered in this green lichen, the green and grey, whitey lichen stuff. It's really slippery when it's wet, that stuff, so be careful. Another big boggy bit. Let's take to the left. Again, you can stick into the left. It's still boggy. Get yourself some waterproof boots and some gaiters to stop it going down the top. If you get to the top, a little gully here. This is a quite a handy place because it's got a nice view for having your dinner if it's very windy because there's not much of the shelter or lunch as posh people call it but we're having our dinner. It's not actually that windy today a wee bit so we've climbed up a bit so we can sit on a rock and have lunch. Actually, no, we're having dinner still. That's what you call a sandwich. Yes. And health bits as well. That's my dinner. Cornish pasty. Yum. So I'm at the lunch spot, dinner spot. <laughs> There's the top. And while I'm eating my dinner, I'll just give you a bit of a tour. So that place there on the other side of the lock, you can't actually see the lock because it's behind the hill. It's foyers. It's famous falls, you can't see from here. And there's Loch Ness. And I think somewhere in there is Boleskin or Bullskin or whatever, however you pronounce it. But Alistair Crowley at his house. He's some sort of famous occult type person. And then if we pan to the left, just right in the centre of the screen there, you can just about see the sea. So that'll be the Merry Firth. It's got a light of focus, sorry. There we are. Probably the Merry Firth. And then one of the nice things about hiking is the wildlife. I don't know if you can hear it, but it's up there somewhere. A sky tweeter. <laughs> no idea what it's called, but they sound nice. You get them on the hills. They go up in the sky and tweet. I know it stopped. There it is. It's gone again. Somebody's been walking up here barefoot. Hardy soul. Oh, I lost his boot. She, by the size of the footprint. Might be an abominable. Heather man. Anyway. Well, we've had our dinner and it's grinding up. Got a bit windier. We can see more of the lock now. The abominable Heather woman has been here as well. So a lot of the ridge is like this. So you either have to walk through it or around it or take your shoes and socks off. Mm, I love to fly on my feet in the Mississippi mud eh? It's not the same as the Mule Favoni mud, but never mind. Anyway, don't listen to me about taking your shoes and socks off. There's probably a hundred and one good reasons to keep them on. One being jaggy stones. Another being wee snakes that might live in the grass. 
can come out onto the path. And ticks. Yeah, horrible ticks. Midges maybe. <laughs> and Faudia has been bog trotting again. Yes. It's a sport she enjoys from time to time. Somebody's rendering of banana peel on a stone. That'd look good in a gallery somewhere. But apparently banana skins take about a million years to decompose. So eat them or something. The next instalment is banana in the mud. And that's banana in the grass really I suppose because here we've got its companion Sweetie in the mud. That's nice, pretty wee orchid. I don't know what it's called, but it's an orchid I believe. Nice. This is what they call bog cotton. I've no idea why they call it that. Hello. Why Scottish hills look purpley pinky red. And when you get to this kern, it's called a some way up kern. Kern, sorry. Because you know, you're some way up Milfavoni. Bit of a steep bit. Some more steep bits. But there's easy enough paths round. I think that's fires. There appears to be a campsite there. I never knew there was. There it is. Just seen another naked footprint. And I've noticed that they're only heading up the hill. So it means whatever calls them. It's still up there. Oh, once you get here, it looks like you just have to go up that little bit, along a bit, and then you're at the top bit there. But don't be fooled, there's a big valley in between here and there. So you have to go down again and up again. I'll show you in a minute. Look at that. Sunshine. So, the valley's not that big, but still have uh, time to go. Down in the dip. Oh, no. I just jumped from there to there. I can't jump. The things people do to avoid getting in the bog. We'll now demonstrate how to cross a Scottish bog without getting wet. And just when you think you're nearly there, there's another steep bit to climb. And lots and lots and lots of bogs like this to get across. So waterproof your boots. Nice view of Loch Ness and Foyer's campsite there. And you can definitely see the Murray Firth now over there. And then this is a fur old quagmire. So you either have to get all slutchy or walk a long way around. Go for the slutchy, it's quicker. And then it started raining. Huh? It started raining. And when you get to the first big kern, you think you've made it, but you haven't. 
but you can see the other half of the lock. Way down to Fort Augustus. But there's more. So you get to cairn number two. And you think you're at the top. But View though, unless it's misty, in which case you can be forgiven for thinking you're at the top. But no, that's the top over there. And then there we have the real top, the cairn at the real top. There's the other two cairns. You get a good view of the other side here, wherever that is. Good place for a wind farm, that's why it's there, I suppose. And another wind farm, and a rain shower, and a rain shower with a wind farm in it. And Six miles. I don't know how high it was. What can we say about Milford Warney? It's muddy <laughs> a good third of the way. It's a uh, nice view from the top. Uh, there's a path all the way, um, but underfoot it's a bit difficult in some places. Yeah, bring your swimsuit or your wellies. <laughs>